Welcome back students who are taking financial accounting and in this series of videos we are working on the assigned homework problems from the digital study guide for chapter 7 which is the exercises from group B. Come on, no. come on, come on, come on. All right, here we go. Note, accounting is about understanding the concepts and then applying that understanding to the situation at hand. If you get the application aspect wrong, that is one thing and is easily remedied by watching someone else work the problem. However, if you don't understand the concepts, that is a whole other thing. Watching a problem worked out will not help if you do not understand the underlying concepts. Go back and study the text material again and watch the 30 videos. If you still don't understand the concepts and either email or telephone instructor to get help with that understanding. All right, so we're working on problem uh, exercise 7-32. And um, I'm not going to spend a lot of, uh, I spent 30 minutes on exercise 7-31B, right? Um, in that, I spent some time on explaining, oh, where to find the theory videos for the math for business and finance uh, subject that had uh, detailed coverage of bank reconciliations in it. And also in doing that particular exercise, I pointed out um, uh, things along the lines of additional information along the lines of, uh, you know, going from one bank reconciliation to the next and carrying over outstanding items. I'm not going to spend all that time on this exercise. Uh, um, you know, the last video took 30 minutes, 32 minutes, you know, and this is saying, oh, you, sh you should do this in 20 to 25 minutes. Well, actually, I'd be, I'm able to do this in less than that amount of time. Um, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to work straight through it. And if you don't understand, remember, this is the application aspect. If you don't understand the, uh, the concepts, the theory aspect, go back and watch those videos um, and watch the theory videos from the Math for Business and Finance uh, section or at, le at the very least, Exercise 7-31B. All right, so... Um, I'm going to put my bank here, and I'm going to need space to make journal entries. And so I'm going to put my check register here, and I'm going to need space down at the bottom to be able to make journal entries because it says here, um, this is the November bank statement, and the check register is presented. So this is the uh, my general ledger cash account. So this is my GL, and here's my bank statement, and it says check. 210 was written for 330 to pay salaries. All right, so 210 uh, was written to pay salary expense. All right, and it says prepare the bank reconciliation on November 30th, then prepare all necessary journal entries and update the cash account as a result of the bank reconciliation. Okay, so um, for uh, Remember, uh, well, I had explained that there's a relationship between the check register, the GL cash account, and the bank statement, right? All three of these should be equal, right? And what you're basically doing, and I'm not going to go into this too much because I covered it in 7-31B, exercise 7-31B, is that um, your check register, you should be able to reconcile it to your general ledger cash account. And then when you get your bank statement, you reconcile your cash re your check register to the bank statement. Well, in this exercise, we're basically saying, um, you know, we, and it's probably due to the fact that you don't have that many transactions. If you don't have that many transactions, um, you really don't, you don't really need a check register because as long as you have a transaction, you journalize it and post it immediately because you have so few of them, um, you could just use your general ledger cash account um, as your check register, and that's kind of like what they're doing here, okay? But the reality is, is if you have a lot more uh, transactions, you would keep a separate register, and then you'd reconcile the register to the general ledger cash account, and then you'd reconcile the check register to the bank statement, and anything that happens in the check register, you'd have to make journal entries and post it to your GL cash account in order to make sure that you have the correct cash balance in your general ledger account, which is which would be the same in your, as in your check register. All right, so for my balance, 
um, on my bank statement, I have a 1030 and my balance on my check register, I have a balance of 3304. All right, so um, deposits, I have 1600, which is on my bank statement, but I don't have 2700. I have it, it's showing in my GL account, but it is not here um, you know, on my bank statement. So I have to um, add that to my bank statement. So I'm going to add deposit of 2700. So that's 37, so I'm at 3730. Now I'm going to go down through my checks. Well, here's my check 210 and the amount of $33. But notice it hit the bank statement for $333. I mean $330. And it says here check 210 was written for 330 to pay salary expense. So when it was posted to the general ledger account, it was posted incorrectly. Right? So um, that is something that will have to be addressed when we uh, do our check register side. But for right now, you know, um, our GL account says we had a, uh, a check for 210 and our bank statement says we, you know, it was cashed and it is being cashed in the right amount. So I don't need to um, make any adjustments to the bank statement for that. I have to make the adjustment to the check register. All right, check number 211, all right, for 400 is on there. Check number 212 for 113 is on there, but checks 213 and 214 are not. So let's check 213 and 214, which is, uh, let's go do it like this, 300 and 150. So that's less $450. So that's zero, um, eight, two, thirty-two, eighty, right? Is going to be the uh, final balance that um, for our bank statement because we've considered everything that's here. Now we have to go the opposite direction. What's on our bank statement that is not in our check register? All right. So uh, first thing that I, you know, as I'm going down here, the first thing I see is this EFT rent, electronic fund transfer for rent. That is not here on my cash account. So I have to take less electronic fund transfer for rent of $410, which gives me four, nine from two is eight, oh, 2830, uh, 2894, sorry. Um, all of my checks were accounted for. Now I have to look at my other charges. Well, I don't have any other charges up here. So less other charges. And so I have a service charge for 23. I have check printing of 14 and NSF check 201 for $100. And so that total is um, $137. So I subtract that out, and that's seven. Three from eight is five, one from seven, 2757 and then now the last thing that we have to consider all right is this here issue of the $330 okay so if the check should have been for 330 and it was only for thir uh, we wrote it in as only for 33 all right that means we have to take out uh, $297 more all right I'm sorry we have to um, oops, 
makes sense to me making a mistake here okay so I mean this happens all right and you're seeing me work through this right I wrote less um, EFT rent and I subtracted out the 410 no I mean we received the rent so I should have been adding that in all right so that's 7 37 14 not the opposite way so now when I'm subtracting I have 7 from 10 is 7 from 6 is 5 okay so now and I'm sorry I, I made that mistake but this is what happens right so and and I'm just doing the math in, in my head and going okay where should I be at so now I have this here um, check 210 error correction um, and I have to take out $297 so that should give me my 8 to 3280 all right which would be my bottom line all right so um, just to go over it again here since I made it a little bit a little bit confusing Let me erase all of this here. Okay, so what I had done is when I had come down, when I when I was looking at, okay, what's on my bank statement that is not on my check register, and I have to write it on my check register, I went down and I said, okay, I have this EFT for rent of 410, which is what I put there, but that was money coming in. That wasn't money coming out, all right? You know, and what I had done was I had made that as a deduction because it was I treated it as money going out. Well, that was an error in my part. It's, you know, we're collecting that rent, so I have to add that in, all right? So that's money that came into our account that should be a debit in our, uh, our cash account. So I made that correction, and then... So that was, that was on our bank statement that is not on our check register. Um, all of these checks are, you know, were accounted for up here. This deposit was accounted for right here. So we're kind of like, we're missing this 410 and we're missing all of these other charges right here. But we also have to consider this 330, which was an error right here. This 330, um, it, you know, the difference between the two is this $297. This shouldn't have been 33. It should be 333. Well, obviously, we had to deduct more, okay? So this here is not a less. This here is an add. The EFT uh, for rent for 410, which gives me 3714. And then I have to take out you know the the service charge the check printing and the non-sufficient fund because those are deductions from the account and then i also have to make the check number 210 you know error correction and that was a deduction when i do that i end up with a balance of uh, 3280 which is the same balance that i have on my uh, bank statement so my cash balance should be 3280 now that's doing the the reconciliation itself um the next thing that we would need to do is we need to make um, the journal entries, all right? Because remember, these um, if I had a check register, you know, this deposit would not be in my check register, so I would have to add it to my check register. These other charges are not in my check register so I would have to add it to my check register and of course I have to make an I have to make the change for this error in the check register so I have to make journal entries for these additions to the check register and I would just basically write them in and then my final you know I would write those into the check register and my final balance would be 3280 but because we're not using the check register, or even if we did, we still have to make journal entries and post them to our general ledger accounts so that those amounts would end up into our general ledger account. So what journal entries do we need to make? All right. Um, so for this here, electronic fund transfer, you know, we received cash. Now I'm going to write these down and you'll end up pausing the video.
um, if you need to, because I'm going to erase them. I'm only going to write them up here and erase them. So I'm going to debit my cash because I'm getting cash and I have to credit something else. And so I'm going to call that rent revenue. Um, and that's for $410, right? So that would be my journal entry for that deposit that was not put on our books. And so um, go ahead and pause the video. All right, and now we're back and I'm going to erase this. All right, so then the next entry we have to make is for um, these uh, other charges. And just like I explained in uh, exercise 7-31B, again, go back and watch that. All right, if, because um, I'm not going to re-explain what I'm going to do next. Um, I have these other charges. Well, this service charge for 23 and this check printing for 14, um, I'm going to combine those together and I'm going to put them to miscellaneous expense. And that means I'm going to credit my cash because I'm reducing my cash because I paid out that charge and I paid out that printing. And the total of those is $37. I could have used bank fees or a bank charge. It all depends upon what's on my general ledger uh, chart of accounts as to whether I would use a bank fee or a bank charge account. Or if I don't have those, that's why I would use the miscellaneous expense account. And I'm not going to go through the explanation of why. Go ahead, pause the video there. Sorry. Um, go ahead, pause the video. And now I'm back, and I'm not going to go over the explanation of why I added the two together. Again, look at exercise 7-31B. All right, so that takes care of those amounts. Now for this $100 for the non-sufficient fund charge, all right, um, you know, that was a check um, for 210 Remember, um, We, non-sufficient fund check number uh, 201. Um, this here is a credit to our cash because um, it is a, you know, it's a charge to us for $100, right? And I, you know, when I'm trying to create a journal entry and I don't know how, I ask myself, do I affect cash? And in this case here, it's yes. I'm, you know, I have $100 that's uh, being taken out, a deduction of $100 because it's a $100 charge for a non-sufficient fund. Now, the opposite side of the coin is, well, if I have a, a credit somewhere, I have to debit something else. Well, what am I going to debit? Well, since it's a check, I'm going to end up debiting accounts receivable for $100, all right? And the reason why I'm uh, debiting the accounts receivable for $100 is because remember, somebody paid us the um, $100 on account, right? So when they paid us the $100 for on, on the account, we made a journal entry to debit our cash and credit our accounts receivable to that account for the hundred dollars all right well that check bounces so what we're doing is we're reversing that entry okay and that's why we have a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to cash because that check bounce that's why it's a non-sufficient uh, uh, fund for a check for that particular check you know we're recording that bounced check from the customer all right so go ahead and pause the video Okay, and lastly, we have to uh, write the um, journal entry for the uh, error for $297, all right? And that had said to pay salary's expense. So when I uh, wrote this check, um, I was debiting cash. I'm sorry, um, I was crediting cash because my cash was going out. And I made it only for $33, and I debited salary's expense, right? 
for $33, but the reality is it should have been $330, right? So I'm going to make the same exact entry, but just add the additional amount. So I'm going to debit salaries expense for 297 and credit the credit my cash for 297 in order to record you know that entry for the the 297 that would uh, that would just increase uh, the amount of you know from $33 plus the 297 which would end up being the 330 which is what my actual check was cashed for all right okay so that was exactly uh, well actually it's as I look at it it's 21 minutes here and I spent about two minutes at the beginning of the video um, going over administrative stuff before I actually started doing the exercise. And um, I did spend some time re-explaining some things here. Um, but basically, uh, you know, that exercise was done in less than 20 minutes. So hopefully you understood that. And if not, you know, like I said, go back and watch the theory videos. Definitely go back and watch exercise 7-31B because that uh, it's very similar to this, but it gives a little bit more in-depth explanation on some items. All right, so with that said, um, I'll see you in the next video.